You've spent the last week spewing complete fake news bullshit. And also, I would say you've also been spewing stuff that is blatantly racist. And here's the interesting thing about your position with regard to your conversion to Islam and becoming a Muslim. Muslims, as you know, have been ranting about you for the last few days, utterly betraying them because you've decided to associate yourself with Tommy Robinson, who is a far-right thug, who has been spewing utter horrible Islamophobic anti-Muslim rhetoric all week, and yet you have not distanced yourself from him. So the Muslim community in the UK now view you as part of the enemy too. You have boxed yourself into a position now where your own Muslim community in the UK are enraged with you because they believe you are siding with Tommy Robinson, who is leading a far-right series of attacks on Muslims and mosques and is being blatantly Islamophobic in the process. The reason the riots are happening is people like you and Tommy Robinson have been spewing utter disinformation, which has led people to believe that the person that perpetrated these despicable crimes was an illegal Muslim migrant. Do you now denounce right-wing thugs who committed attacks on Muslims and on mosques in the last week? And do you therefore condemn Tommy Robinson for inciting it? On July 29th, 2024, a 17-year-old man walked into a dance studio in Southport, UK, and started attacking children. He was able to stab three children to death and injure many more before he was arrested. Following his arrest, news about the attack started spreading like wildfire. Far-right politicians and influencers took advantage of the situation and started spreading fake news about the attacker's origin, that he was an illegal Muslim migrant. In reality, the attacker was a non-Muslim British citizen. Popular politicians and anti-Muslim activists like Nigel Farage and Tommy Robinson amplified these lies, and our own Andrew Tate, who has been a Muslim for over a year now, joined in on these lies, further amplifying the lies to a much larger audience on social media. These lies then incited the far-right bigots to riot and attack Muslims, mosques and other Muslim-owned properties all around the United Kingdom. Andrew Tate then went on to show support for well-known Islamophobe Tommy Robinson, a man who has continuously degraded Islam and Muslims by Tate incorrectly stating that Islam does not prevent him from supporting an anti-Muslim bigot. Tate also had the gall to compare discriminatory, intoxicated British hooligans to innocent Palestinians who are being genocided as we speak, referring to the rioting thugs as oppressed British men that are on par with starving, war-torn Gazans. This is absolutely ridiculous. Number one, the Quran tells us as Muslims, we are forbidden from supporting anyone that disrespects our religion, the Prophet peace be upon him, and the Almighty Allah SWT. And number two is Tate is seriously comparing alcohol and substance abusing thugs for attacking mosques as well as assaulting black and brown people in the streets to Palestinian civilians who are being massacred by saying they are the same. If anything, these far-right thugs are more like the people carrying out the oppression on Palestinians than anything else. Brother Muhammad Tajab responded to Tate on X respectfully at first by saying he's always supported Tate and Tate's support for Tommy Robinson is completely haram as Tommy is an enemy of Islam and Brother Muhammad cited where in the Quran it clearly states this. Brother Muhammad correctly called out Andrew's lack of condemnation for British mosques being vandalised, Muslims being attacked and Islam being disrespected by these far-right rioters. Brother Hijab also called Tate out on his anti-immigration stance because by default some of those immigrants will be fellow Muslims. Muhammad Hijab challenged Tate's strange narrative that the ignorant rioters are somehow noble patriots by stating that they have always viewed Muslims as the enemy and they will never fully accept Tate until he abandons Islam and adopts their way of thinking. As you can see, Muhammad Hijab was trying to help Andrew salvage the situation by adopting the correct Islamic position that he advised him with. Tate was respectful in his response, however he did not take Muhammad Hijab's advice and instead doubled down in his support for the far right by saying the thugs are angry because they are losing their country and once again outrageously compared the privileged life lifestyles of British men to oppressed Palestinians who are barely surviving a genocide, starvation and ethnic cleansing. Andrew then told Muhammad Hijab that as Muslims we should show compassion to the hooligans attacking our places of worship and our fellow believers, as well as disrespecting our religion, that we should stand in solidarity with them while they riot against us. Tate did say there should be open dialogue and no violence. I'm totally okay with that, but it's the anti-Muslim rioters in the UK that are currently showing aggression and committing acts of violence, not Muslims. And how are we supposed 
supposed to talk to them when mobs of them are ganging up to assault our men and there are reports that they are throwing acid at Muslim women. This is not about them losing their country. 80% of the UK is majority white. There is literally no risk that the country will be taken over by minorities. It's not mathematically possible. They have simply been whipped into a frenzy by bigoted scammers like Tommy Robinson who is selling them a lie. Brother Mohammed responded to Tate by saying, as Muslims we don't have a duty to appease these right-wing thugs and the ethnic Brits are not just puppets to be used for the gain of native Brits and then discarded when they're done using us. Mohammed Dajab correctly debunked Andrew Tate's horribly insensitive comparison of far-right rioters with surviving Palestinians by pointing out Tommy Robinson's and his associates' strong ties to Israel. And once again, Brother Hijab gave Tate the opportunity to speak up against the disgusting act of mosques being vandalised by these far-right rioters, as well as speaking up against the Muslims that have been assaulted by them and to condemn the rioters for their Islamophobic chants. Tate's response was to sidestep Mohammed Hijab's advice by using his large platform as an excuse of having to watch what he says and instead gave the neutral political answer that violence should be avoided on both sides. The conversation ended with Brother Mohammed pointing out to Tate that one week of right-wing riots in the UK have caused more damage than 10 months of pro-Palestinian protests which have been relatively peaceful. Brother Hijab checkmated Tate by saying if Muslims had damaged places of worship and hurt police officers during these protests the same way these far-right rioters have done, they would be labelled as extremists. He also pointed out that normal British people are not partaking in these riots and the demographic is mostly working class hooligans. And lastly, Mohammed Hijab trumped Andrew Tate by once again calling him out for not addressing his support for Islamophobe Tommy Robinson, to which Tate had no response. In this video, we review the fake news that Andrew Tate helped spread that led to the riots and Andrew Tate's unholy alliance with the far-right anti-Muslim bigots and his outright and blatant racism. As the British public and the Muslim community unite in London to put an end to far-right riot mobs terrorising the UK, Piers Morgan interviewed one of the online instigators that incited the riots via misinformation, that being Andrew Tate, who is ironically a Muslim and the son of African-American and Irish migrants. Surprisingly, Piers Morgan put Andrew Tate to task and was very supportive of the British Muslim community as well as people seeking asylum in the UK. Let's look at the first clip where Piers Morgan confronts Andrew Tate about the misinformation Tate spread online. They contributed to far-right thugs rioting in the UK. Nigel Farage, who is now a member of parliament in the UK and who has been saying some very inflammatory things in the last week or so about these riots, has blamed you and named you in a radio interview as the person who spread the disinformation which he then believed. Um, I want to start by playing a clip of a video you posted to Instagram, I think it was, on the 29th of July that you posted to various social media platforms in which was your response to what had happened. So an undocumented migrant decided to go into a Taylor Swift dance class today and stab six little girls. That's right, somebody arrived in the UK on a boat. Nobody knew who he was. Nobody knows where he's from. The media is, of course, hiding the fact that this is a 17-year-old male. They don't want to highlight how ridiculous it is that we allow military-aged males, combatants, to flood our shores. I don't see any protests in the UK. I don't see anybody complaining. Nobody's outside of the school. Nobody's outside the police station. The soul of the Western man is so broken that when the invaders slaughter your daughters, you do absolutely nothing. Now, now that video has been viewed 15.1 million times. X limited the post's visibility because of its rules on hateful conduct. But the bottom line, Andrew, is that almost everything you said in that video was completely untrue. And yet it was apparently seized upon online, spread wide and far and made people believe what you were saying. So my question for you off the top here is why did you race to spread such woeful disinformation given the massive following you have and encourage people to take action against a caricature and description of who had perpetrated this which was simply untrue. Well firstly I'll start by saying I didn't know Nigel Farage said those things about me which is a shame because I'm actually a fan of him I think he's trying to do the right thing. Well I can't say I'm surprised this guy seems to be supporting anyone who is anti-Muslim. I mean that's the impression that I'm getting. And not only has he been backstabbed by Nigel, and get used to this because you're going to be backstabbed by a lot of people in the right wing. Here's the sort of things that Nigel says. We have a growing number of young people in this country who do not subscribe to British values, in fact loathe much of what we stand for. Are we talking about Muslims here? We are. He has in effect brushed Muslim kids as not subscribing and loathing 
British values. In other words, otherizing them, villainizing them. The people whom you respect demonize us and they have caused a rise in Islamophobic attacks. In fact, according to The Guardian, over 300% since October the 7th. I'll argue with you about the fact that everything I said was untrue. I think the only thing I said that was untrue is that perhaps he was undocumented. It was a 17 year old male, it was a migrant. He did kill little girls. And advocating for people to stand outside and make it clear that they're unhappy with what happened is not a dangerous ideology. We live in a democracy where we have the right to protest and the right to make it clear when our voices are not heard. Again, you've repeated the fact this kid who's been, who has obviously now been charged with very serious crimes, including killing these three girls, was a migrant. He wasn't a migrant, he was born in Wales. His parents were legal immigrants from Rwanda. So he's not a migrant, he's, a, he's somebody born in Wales, born in the United Kingdom. Many UK-based Muslim influencers had a strong reaction to the lies that Andrew Tate spread about them. However, this false dichotomy of sides, choose a team, is exactly what the Matrix wants. Because I'm going to tell you what is going to happen. No, I'll tell you what happened. You want to talk about Matrix? You riled them up with false information. Yours was the early few biggest voices that said that he was an illegal immigrant. In fact, somebody at the prominence of Nigel Farage, even he took news from you and then threw you under the bus. One of the reasons the Southport riots were as bad as they were is we weren't told the truth. There were stories online from some very prominent folks with big followings, Andrew Tate, etc. There were far right thugs who were leading this and they were attacking mosques. They were chanting anti-Muslim chants and they were doing this because there people was, there had was put a out black there. person Hang in on. the crowd. Would you say You've the had crowd your was say. Black I'm going to have my say now. It was put out falsely on social media that the person who did this was a Muslim. Not just a Muslim, but a Muslim who came in on one of the small boats, part of the very contentious ongoing issue of the small boat. I'm not saying you did, I'm saying this is what was put out on social media in a series of false posts, which then went viral, right? So he was supposedly a Muslim, not true. Supposedly came in on a small boat, not true. Supposedly on an MI6 watch list as a potential terrorist, not true. None of this was true. And so on the back of that, far right thugs who led this went up and attacked mosques and they went and attacked hotels with asylum seekers in there waiting to be protest and they were trying to set fire to them. Those are acts of despicable violence which were being led by far right thugs. Now, not everybody involved in all these protests is a far right thug. Some of them will be ordinary members of the, pe of the public trying to legitimately protest peacefully. I completely accept it. But the ones who were leading it, who were committing the acts of violence and making the threats against the Muslim community, were doing so because they had been completely misled about who had done this. It was not a Muslim. It was not an illegal immigrant. It was not somebody on the MI6 watch list. It was none of those things. Now, you posted on July the 30th, the day after the killing. And I feel particularly incensed, by the way, that the deaths of these three young girls have been hijacked in such a reprehensible manner to attack Muslims when a Muslim had nothing to do with it, right? You put this on, on July the 30th, you posted a picture saying, this is the man from Cardiff. We're looking at this picture now. The murder of the little girl, straight off a boat, you said. Really? He wasn't straight off a boat because this wasn't the person who perpetrated the crimes. You got 4.3 million views for this. And the community notes clarified, this is not the man that killed, attacked the children and adults in Southport. Nigel Farage has literally just chucked you under a monumental bus. He's gone on LBC radio and he said the reason that he himself was promoting complete nonsense about the person who committed these heinous crimes was because of people like you, Andrew Tate. He names you. He says that you were responsible for spinning disinformation, which he was dumb enough to believe. Well, I never said he was a Muslim. I never said he was a Syrian. I never said he was on the MI6 watch list. The only thing I could have got incorrect is that he was an undocumented migrant. And if Nigel Farage has done that, that's his decision. He'll have to live with his conscience. I'm not here to tell him how to think. I'm also man enough to be understanding that not everybody has to like me all of the time for me to agree with some of the things they say. You've also been spewing stuff that is blatantly racist. On the 1st of August, you posted a, a cartoon saying typical man from Cardiff. Let's look at that cartoon. This has had 11 million views. Yeah, it's a taxpayer. It's, it's a migrant arriving on the boat with taxpayers' money. And I think a lot of people are upset about that. I want to make something clear because I'm a Muslim myself. When you say typical man from Cardiff, you are again telling people that in your estimation, the person that committed this came in 
as an illegal migrant on a boat. That is not true. None of that is true. Well, what I'm actually doing, Pierce, because you may not be aware of this because you're part of the legacy media machine, which is why you defended Israel so heavily. I'm on YouTube. You're not allowed to have your I'm own opinion. I'm on YouTube. Let, you're not I'm allowed. on legacy no, media. You're part of the My legacy show media is on machine. YouTube. And you're not allowed to have your own and opinion. But let me explain something Every to you, word Pierce. of this will go I, up, I, as you know. Perfect. I, perfect. I understand exactly how the media machine works. The fact that they kept highlighting that he's from Cardiff and showing pictures of him as a child, as opposed to showing pictures of him as the large barbaric man he was which stabbed those little girls, was a deliberate PR spin by the propaganda arm of the British government to try and subvert and subdue the UK populace because they knew everybody would What's be outraged by what they saw. That's crap. why every every picture of him is he's a kid. Honestly. They keep saying he's from Cardiff. This was set up on purpose. Now, the point I was making is as he follows. He was literally the born in Cardiff. Cardiff. The do, Matrix do didn't well? pretend he was born in Cardiff. You've been posting cartoons of people coming in illegally, armed on little boats, because you want people to think that the person that did this was that person, but he wasn't. I'm a Muslim myself, so there's no reason why I want any kind of violence against Muslims. That's the first thing that's very clear. Part, and I, I want to make something else very clear. I'm actually in a quite unique scenario as a Muslim revert, half black, half white. I've had both sides of this dichotomy try and recruit me, perhaps. I can't be taught to hate anybody. There's no Muslim alive who can teach me to hate anybody, and there's no white man alive who can teach me to hate anybody. There's no hate in my heart, there's only love. But when you have love, you have protectiveness. And you have to feel a protectiveness for the things you care about. And that's what I think a lot of people don't understand. We call people hateful all the time for having a point of view, especially when they get out on the street because they feel like they need to express it. A lot of these people were not hateful. A lot of these people were full of love and they were full of concern. I you put literally up that cartoon, encourage people true. to feel hateful. You've encouraged How? people to feel hateful too because you've encouraged people to believe the person that did this crime is not an illegal migrant. But you wanted to demonize the illegal migrants by what you've been doing in the last week. You wanted people to believe this was one of the people who come over on a boat illegally into this country, part of the so-called invasion. And here's the interesting thing about your position with regard to your conversion to Islam and becoming a Muslim. Muslims, as you know, have been ranting about you for the last few days and utterly betraying them because you've decided to associate yourself with Tommy Robinson, who is a far-right thug, who has been spewing utter, horrible Islamophobic, anti-Muslim rhetoric all week, and yet you have not distanced yourself from him. So the Muslim community in the UK now view you as part of the enemy too. You know that. How do you feel about that? Well, I pray for my brothers and I think the ones, the, the information I've seen and the replies I've seen have not been hateful from the Islamic community. Saying to Tommy Robinson that I will debate him on issues, I don't think is failing to distance myself. I debate you all the time, Pierce, and we disagree on basically everything. I'm happy to argue with Tommy because we disagree on so many different points of view and I think it's very important that we have conversation. The reason these riots are happening in the first place is because everybody's afraid to talk. I'm prepared to sit down with somebody I don't like and don't That's agree with. That's complete nonsense. To talk to Tommy. That's nonsense. The reason the riots are happening is people like you and Tommy Robinson have been spewing utter disinformation, which has led people to believe that the person that perpetrated these despicable crimes was an illegal Muslim migrant who was on the MI6 terror and watch list. Firstly, right. I'm saying I'm, you and Tommy Robinson, a, be between you, between you, okay. I'm saying no, between you, but, but you where's put the logic out there failure? A there's a logic false failure. Of, there's a logic failure of, of lumping me in with somebody who I don't agree with and saying, "Oh, you and so him." So do you said denounce X. Tommy Robinson? Tommy Robinson, I disagree Tommy Robinson? on a whole bunch of issues. I think he's he's, you he's him. completely incorrect on his view of Islam. We're not Is playing he, this game of constant him denouncing. For, do you denounce him for inciting, think, inciting I, the rioting? I denounce him for everything bad he said about Islam. He's absolutely incorrect, and I cannot be his friend or support him for that no, reason. No, for inciting However, the rioting by telling people, people it was a Muslim illegal I'm not migrant. Say, it's not for me to decide who has inspired, incited the rioting, and it's not for you to decide. Well, you can't it's denounce for that. A court denounce what? I'm you not going to sit here and say Tommy who's in charge Robinson of the riots because telling nobody people knows. he was an illegal my Muslim. View, my view on why the riots happened is because I believe that the native population, the Christian population of the UK, feels like their voice is not heard. Despite being asked again and again, Andrew Tate denied to condemn the anti-Muslim bigot Tommy Robinson for inciting violence against Muslims. I agree with Piers when he said that misinformation online led to far-right thugs attacking mosques and engaging in anti-Muslim chants up and down the country. And Piers correctly pointed out that the Southport attacker was not Muslim, was not a migrant, and was not on the MI6 watch list for being an Islamic extremist. 
extremist and in fact was a non-Muslim British citizen. Piers correctly scolded Andrew for posting a picture of a random man at the height of all the online speculation who was not the Southport attacker but was involved in a separate incident in Dublin. This is an L for Andrew. If you're wrong, just admit it. You have boxed yourself into a position now where your own Muslim community in the UK are enraged with you because they believe you are siding with Tommy Robinson who is leading a far-right series of attacks on Muslims and mosques and is being blatantly Islamophobic in the process. And you know that. And so what well, do you say to the Muslim community who believe that's what you're doing? Well, if there's a small contingent of the Muslim community which believe that, I've yet to see so much vitriol it's like not pretending small. exists. But I want to make it very clear. I want to make it very clear, Pierce. I'll make it very clear here. I will answer the question. I am an Islamic revert and I do not want to talk scripture because there's people more qualified than I. But I'll make it clear. I lead with love in my heart. The Islam I was taught was one of peace and tolerance. There's not a single person alive who can force me to take sides or to hate anybody else. And I don't care what kind of Islamic person you are to come along and tell me I should hate somebody else because of Islam is not the kind of Islam I prescribe to. Your religion doesn't... What? Let me give you a hadith, a saying of the Prophet. Indeed, the strongest bond of faith is to love for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah. People like Mr. Robinson, who a killer of 77 people, Anders Breivik, terrorist in Norway, he donated to rebel media that hire extremists like Tommy Robinson himself, yes, and Avi Yemeni. Not to mention the terrorist that killed 49 people in a mosque in New Zealand. He mentioned the EDL. The founder is of course Tommy Robinson and he mentioned them very fondly. This is a guy that you're defending? This is a guy that you can't hate? Somebody who has caused the deaths of scores of Muslims by helping him catalyzing riots here in the UK and attacks on mosques and the lynching of colored folks? This is who you want to help? I get that you have an issue with illegal migration but siding with somebody who's clearly funded according to you as well by the Zionists and who's made it clear that he is anti-Islam how on earth do you expect to get good results from this? Fine there's a lot of love in your heart but not it on appears when it comes to yeah but you your first response to the murders of these children was to issue a video in which you spew complete nonsense about the perpetrator being an illegal migrant to this country. That does not fill people with love. It makes them hate all illegal immigrants to this country. You told your millions of followers, and it was seen by 15 million people, this video, that it was an illegal migrant who had committed these crimes. That was a lie. Are you prepared to apologize for that lie? It was a migrant as opposed to an illegal migrant. So I was incorrect. It wasn't. He was, was born in Wales. As opposed to an illegal migrant. Well, this he is where we have the Welsh, false dichotomy. That we have he to, was this somebody is where we born have the dichotomy here of views. and was legally allowed to be in the country. Do you accept that? This is where we have the dichotomy of views, which I explained to you earlier on. I explained to you why they exist. So you, you'd like do to you accept he was legally was permitted to be in the country? I'm, yes happy no? to, I'm happy to repeat myself if you don't understand. Why did you lie? I've already answered and said I was incorrect saying he was an illegal migrant. He was a migrant. And I'm not going to apologize to anybody who stabbed three little girls. Perhaps that's your business, but Pierce. That's not he mine. wasn't a migrant. As as he was born in Wales. Solitary for the rest of his he life. was born in well, Wales. This is where the dichotomy comes in. The dichotomy There's I've no explained dichotomy. to you three times that you fail to grasp because your mind is. Oh, not, I grasp it. Your mind I grasp is it. You don't think people enough, born sir. in the United Kingdom are British? Do you now accept that when you said on the 29th of July that there was an illegal immigrant who had perpetrated this crime that you were wrong? I accept it looks like the facts of the matter say in fact it was a migrant instead of an illegal migrant. However, there's a huge number of crimes committed by illegal migrants and I still think the country's not safe as long as they're allowed to come into the country. Let me read to you uh, comments from the influential Muslim commentator who's been on Uncensored, Muhammad Hijab, who said to you this, My brother, I've always supported you, but you're severely off the mark on the following points. Your acquiescence to far-right figures like Tommy Robinson is harem as he is an enemy of Islam. Your lack of condemnation of far-right thugs who attacked a mosque and who attacked Muslims and Islam more generally. Many far-right hooligans want no peace with us. They consider us to be an impossible subject. Our existence frustrates them. You are one of us. They will never accept you fully until you embrace their beliefs. We worship Allah alone and build 
fulfilled our purpose on this. No one can compete with this. I urge you to endorse this message and salvage the situation. Do you endorse his message? Do you now denounce right-wing thugs who committed attacks on Muslims and on mosques in the last week? And do you therefore condemn Tommy Robinson for inciting it? Oh, okay. So firstly, I absolutely condemn all violence, especially against Muslims and against mosques. I know Mohammed Hijab well, and I respect him, and he is extremely versed on the Quran and Islam. He's more versed than I am. I think that by having open conversation with the people I disagree with, I did not see myself as aligning with them, but perhaps this is a perception I need to address, of course. I think anybody who's been violent on either side is doing the wrong thing and is being disgusting. I want to make something clear. Piers, you do this very common trick of me explaining to you why I believe something is happening, and then you saying that that's my point of view. I'm not saying I agree with right-wing people who are rioting and attacking Muslims. I'm telling you why I believe they did it. I believe they did it because they didn't feel like they had political representation. That does not mean I represent them. That does not mean I advocate for them. That does not mean That's I not agree with them. That's not why they did them. it. Andrew, if you're logical, you will understand that is not why they did what they did. It's not why they rioted. They rioted in direct response to a social media-led campaign of disinformation which told them that the person who killed these little girls was an illegal Pierce. immigrant Muslim who was on Pierce. an MI6 Pierce. terror watch this list. Is very important. None of those Pierce. things were true. Is... When you're wrong and what you say helps influence minds to go and commit riots as it did because you and Tommy Robinson, between you and others who were amplifying and spreading this bullshit about who this person was, ended up with rioting against Muslims who had nothing to do with the killing Pierce. of those girls. Pierce. And you Pierce. as a Muslim Completely. of all Pierce. people Pierce. should have been the first to denounce Of course, it. Pierce. Of no, Pierce. The logic failed. You're a smart man, but are you trying to say that if you say anything online, you are now responsible for all the consequences of that action? Yes, Mr. Tate. If you incite violence online, you need to take responsibility for it. I believe you've accepted in this interview that you spread disinformation about the person who perpetrated these crimes being an illegal immigrant to the UK. Would you like to apologize I believe for spreading that wrong information? I, if the whole video was expressing my distaste, dissatisfaction and disgust at the events that took place, I believe that I was 95% accurate and got a detail wrong. I didn't get anything important wrong. A 17-year-old man stabbed little girls in a Taylor Swift concert. And People that, attacked and, and asylum that shouldn't seeker ever happen. hotels that shouldn't because ever they happen, believed sir. it was an illegal that should migrant. Never happen. That should never happen anywhere. So for you to sit and say, oh, well, us as the legacy media who never get anything wrong ever expect 100% accuracy when all you do is lie. I made it very clear that it is unacceptable that little girls die on the streets. And that people need to make right. it clear that we are you not going to accept this You also spread lies anymore. about who did it. You've spread you plenty spread of lies, lies sir, and the lies have think, caused the riots. No, you, you, no you, you, for you to sit yes. and say that my video yes. is the only reason there was riots is disingenuous. I didn't say that. Dangerous I said you, you are Tommy gonna be Robinson, the person, and you're gonna others be the person spreading who takes away everybody's ability to express. You're going to take away everybody's ability to express their opinion. And let me tell you something. People who don't feel politically represented at least feel like they have freedom of speech online. If you take that away as well, you're going to get things are going to get a lot worse. It's going to be worse for the country. Pierce, you have to be careful sitting here on your show telling people that unless they said what you want them to say, they're not allowed to be on the internet. You are talking Stalinist. When did I say that? It's communist. It's dangerous. When did I say that? It's, that's exactly what you when said. When did I say you that? You said that anyone the who says anything again. online is causing the riots the themselves again. directly. But you are big on truth and you abhor lies and you hold them to account because they lie and don't tell the truth. Correct. And yet these riots, Correct. you claim were just organic reaction to the problems of the country. No, they weren't. These riots happened because far-right thugs acted on false information that the perpetrator of these wicked crimes against these three little girls that were killed and many others that were seriously wounded was an illegal Muslim who come into the country was on an MI6 terror watch list. That is why these riots happened. So, and that was all okay, a so despicable why did, why lie did the, designed the, to make people the have the completely happen? the wrong idea. And uh, hang on, as a result of those lies, mosques, Muslim mosques, mosques belonging to your religion that you've converted to, were they then will attacked. They to God. They as will were asylum seeker they will hotels, to God. because people believed it was an illegal migrant when it wasn't. It was all lies. And you, as the great espouser of truth who hates lying, should be the first to say that anyone that spread any of those false rumors about him being a Muslim, about him being an illegal immigrant, about him being on the MI6 terror watch list, you should condemn unreservedly anyone who spread any of those false rumors. 
because they're the things that inspired these riots. Again, Piers was correct when he said Muslims felt betrayed by Andrew for aligning with Tommy Robinson, a man who consistently spews anti-Muslim propaganda and led the far-right attacks on Muslims in mosques across the UK from a distance. Tate's refusal to condemn Tommy is why the backlash from Muslims was so strong. Andrew, in response to Piers, went into denial mode. His first lie was that he simply wanted to debate and correct Tommy Robinson, not support him, which as you can see from his now-deleted tweet is completely false. He also denied receiving backlash by saying most of the things he saw online from Muslims was supportive. This is not true. The majority of Muslims felt it was disgraceful how he was endorsing Tommy Robinson. Tate then falsely said the riots happened due to people not communicating properly, which peers opposed him on by reiterating that the riots were caused by viral misinformation that Tate, Tommy and others put out, which led rioters to believe the Southport attacker was a Muslim illegal immigrant. Again, to be fair, Tate once again said he didn't say the guy was a Muslim. However, he did endorse others who did say it was a Muslim and is still sitting on the fence in regards to siding with Muslims, despite Muslims having no involvement in this whatsoever. Piers Morgan asked Andrew to denounce Tommy Robinson for inciting anti-Muslim riots. Tate in response denounced Tommy for his views on Islam, which is good. Tate also said he can't be friends with Tommy or support him because of those views, which is also good. But we must note, this is a stance he took only after Muslims critiqued him online and informed him that the Quran prohibits us from befriending enemies of our religion. However, Tate refused to denounce Tommy for inciting the riots, maybe because it would mean he would have to own up to his part in inciting them also. I have to call out Andrew Tate's position. Tate had no problem calling brown people and black people the p-word and n-word when speaking about immigration on his so-called large platform, which contributed to these riots starting. Everyone's just coming in and invading our country. Please. Yeah, well... <laughs> Tate also had no problem with publicly and falsely declaring the British-born Southport attacker as an illegal immigrant, again on his large platform, before he knew the exact facts, which also contributed to these riots starting. And Tate has no problem with endorsing an anti-Muslim bigot like Tommy Robinson and comparing race rioters to oppressed Gazans, once again on his large platform, which justifies these riots continuing. But for some reason, he simply can't bring himself to defend Islam, Muslims and mosques on his large platform. I think I think we've gone past the stages of good assumptions in the sense where we've assumed he was new etc and believe me if it was a muslim sister who came to islam and was doing some of the things he's doing that'll be out that'll be outright outrage outrage and again that's you know the unconscious bias maybe a lot of people have but the point is what now he's come out with his brother again people are saying it's parody it's just a joke he's come and said the p word and the n word where is he coming from what is this issue this is outright racism the language that andrew tate has been using is deplorable racist and not suitable for somebody who's been a muslim for at least a year so let's have a listen and you guys can be the judge F that packy anyway <laughs> <laughs> What's he saying? Because Andrew, in my opinion, is chasing relevance and acceptance by the far right by platforming people like Katie Hopkins and promoting Tommy Robinson. What he is doing is staining his legacy. Now, the P word that he mentioned, we know, especially here in the UK and in Canada, it is has racist connotations. Just journey a little bit back to the 1970s and there was something called packy bashing in which anyone with a brown skin color was bullied, their shops were destroyed and they were beaten sometimes to death. And being somebody that lived in Luton, you should know this. It's not like you're American that's confused that, oh, I was just confused. I thought it was short for their country. And you know what the greatest irony is? He's hyped up all these people and now these far right individuals are turning against him. Read this tweet. Oh, he's disappointed that they are turning against him. Oh, okay. So much sympathy coming your way, Andrew. Not. And now Nigel Farage is even throwing the likes of Tommy under the bus as well. They're turning on each other. Good. Good on you, mate. And hopefully, Andrew, this will be an awakening for you. That these people that you are looking towards for acceptance, they will never accept you. So the only one you need to be true to is God. For if you fix your relationship with God, Allah, then Allah will fix your relationship with the people.